In my last YouTube video, I posted a video about my 2014 Subaru Crosstrek talking about whether I would buy another one again. Now there are a lot of things that are really good about the Crosstrek and um, it's very clear to me after owning one for a couple of years why they're so popular. However, there are a lot of things that I didn't really care for about the car and at the conclusion of the video I mentioned that I was looking to replace it with something that met my needs a little bit better. Now I've always been a big fan of Audis. I've actually owned a 2003 Audi A4, a 2006, a 2007, and a 2009. So I've always been a big fan of the Audi A4 and decided that um, really wanted to go back to either like an Audi, a BMW, maybe a Volkswagen with my new vehicle. And um, so today I'm going to go over um, or give you a chance to take a look at my new vehicle. So here we have a 2013. Audi Q5. Now if you're not familiar with the Audi Q5, it's, um, well it was Audi's smaller crossover SUV. Um, since coming out with the Audi Q5, they've also come out with an Audi Q3 and Audi Q Q2 is uh, coming to the market shortly. The Audi Q5 is based off of the A4 platform. So it shares um, same chassis, and uh, same engines actually as the A4. Now the Q thousand or the Q5 came out in 2009, um, or as a 2009 model in 2008, and then they did a minor refresh in 2013. So this is the refreshed version. Um, with the refresh, you got some different style of headlights than the earlier version. Um, the grille looks a little bit different. Um, tail lights are also a little different and then different engine configurations so the 2008 or well the the version of the Q5 that was released in 2008 um, and sold between 2009 and 2012 came in either a 2 liter turbo or 3.2 naturally aspirated V6 um, and then in 2013, <clears throat> they upgraded the 2-liter turbo, um, still the same that's offered in the A4, and then they released the 3-liter turbo, oh, well, 3.0T, let me show you that real quick, actually. So, 3.0T, um, on all Audi models, that typically means turbo. Um, interestingly enough, this is a supercharged version of the 3.0. Um, and it actually is a detuned version of the 3 liter V6 that's offered in the Audi S4. If you want the non-detuned version, you can get the Audi SQ5, which um, has the same engine as the S4. Um, now, this isn't quite as quick. The uh, 0 to 60 time in the SQ5 is 4.4 seconds. In this version, it's 5.5, so it's, so it's still pretty quick. Um, you also get improved gas mileage and obviously quite a bit more affordable than the SQ5. Um, the other advantage of the 3 lead, or the 3.0 is that it came out in 2013. SQ5 didn't come out until 2014, so it's hard to find a used one um, that's reasonably priced at this point. Hopefully in time those will come down. Now the Q5 was also released as either a 3 liter uh, TDI, um, that model is actually no longer sold because of the diesel scandal with uh, Volkswagen and Audi. And then they've also got the Q5 Hybrid. So there's four different um, engine options that are available in the current generation of the Q5. Um, along with that, there are a number of different packages that are available. So the base version of the Q5 is a premium. Um, then you get a number of different options with the Premium Plus. This is actually a Premium Plus. And then the top end Q5 is the Prestige model. Now on top of that, they've got a number of other packages that are available. Um, this has the S-Line package, which um, is kind of the sport version. Um, the thing that I like about that package the most and the reason that I wanted it is because I really like these wheels. Um, these are the sport 20 inch wheels. Um, I think that they give the, they really kind of complete the look of the car. I'm not a huge fan of the Q5 unless it's got these wheels on it, actually. I think that it really makes the car 
And then inside the Sport model or the S-Line model, um, you get some nice upgrades in here as well. So you can see you get the Sport steering wheel. This is actually basically the same steering wheel that they've got in the Audi R8. So um, it makes the car feel really sporty. Obviously it's not an R8, but um, you know, it's kind of a fun feature. And then you'll see that it's got the sport seats here. So these offer a little bit more support over on the sides, um, sides of the seats. And then in the front here, it's got this extra pad that can adjust forward and backward. So it really kind of secures you in place a little bit better. Um, the Q5, I'm really impressed with just the fit and finish on the inside. I mentioned that I had a Subaru Crosstrek as my last vehicle. Um, I didn't realize how much I missed owning an Audi. I've had several several Audis and um, this is really where they shine is just you know really nice build quality it's just amazing the detail that Audi puts into every little piece of this car it's like the designers on each you know each portion really take a lot of pride in what they do um, because it just has great finish to everything even the steering wheel you take a close look just the detail on that steering wheel and the fit and finish. It's impressive. They put so much effort into that. Um, the great thing about the Q5 too is that it offers a really nice balance of practicality with comfort um, and versatility. So back here you've got nice spacious seats. Um, these fold flat. And you've got a pretty good amount of cargo space as well. Um, much better than in the uh, Crosstrek. And even though I keep min uh, mentioning the Crosstrek, obviously these are very different class of vehicles. The Q5 is a lot more expensive than the Crosstrek. Um, and the uh, Crosstrek is in a smaller class of vehicles. It's a compact SUV and this is more of a midsize. <clears throat> so obviously not an apples to apples comparison. Um, however, if you want to buy a new Crosstrek, you're looking at about 25000 You could buy a nice Q5, used Q5, for that same price. And so even though they're not in the same category, I think that it's a car that you can compare. Now, the uh, Q5 it can be slightly complicated. Um, one of the really nice features about the car I'll actually show you that is that it's this has got the smart key this isn't available on all the Q5s but um, if you have the smart key package and you can usually tell based on this little square on the door so if I put my finger right there I just locked the doors and folded the mirrors in and so one of the things I really like about this is when you go skiing or mountain biking or something it's cold outside you can you know, get ready in the car, put all your, you know, gear on, gloves, tuck your key away somewhere safe, and then when you get out of the car, you can just tap that to lock the doors and take off. Um, when you come up to the car, you just put your hand right there, and it unlocks the car. Mirrors stay folded in until you start the car up, and then you're good to go. Now, along with that, also got the start stop button so you have two options for starting the q5 you can either use that button with your key inside the vehicle or there's a slot right here that you can insert the key into to start the vehicle so you've got two options for starting the vehicle there so um, you're going to go ahead and push that you got to put your foot on the brake vehicle starts up mirrors fold out now, um, the uh, button arrangement here can be a little confusing if you're new to the Audi. It's not all that confusing. You can see on the screen here, up in the four corners, you've got presets, bands, settings, and functions. Those correspond to these four buttons based on the location on the screen. So you can scroll through those, and then you've got kind of your you've got your nav button, telephone for Bluetooth, radio, which is what we're on right now, and media. So let's say I push media, it's gonna look for my phone and connect to that um, if we wanna do music there, so you can see Mike's phone. Um, press nav, takes us to the navigation, telephone, 
got my directory of numbers, voicemails, um, dialed numbers. You can actually do the push to talk. I could push this and I could say, call Megan, and it would call Megan. Um, so if we go back to radio. Now one of the things I don't care for about this whole system, so we're back on radio, but we've got kind of a two, two uh, touch system. So to scroll through radio stations, I turn this guy. And it turns through the stations. But then when I actually want to select a station, then I've got to push down on that guy to select the station. Um, there's, and it it's, works the same on the steering wheel. So you can scroll between stations. You can see up in the middle there. But then you've got to push on the station to select it. There's no real good seek button, except you've got one down here. So this guy here, you can rotate back and forth to go between stations. Um, I think it's a shame that they don't have a control that's on the steering wheel, and because this is also the volume button, a lot of times as you're seeking between stations, you adjust the volume. Um, they've made a lot of improvements to the whole MMI system on the Q5 since the um, 2009 A4 that I had, which, um, you know, somewhat sim same generation as this Q5. Um, some of the things like heated seats, um, in the older um, the older generation, I guess, of the MMI, which is uh, the name for Audi's, um, uh, I guess, information system. Um, to do the heated seats, you actually had to push the heated seat button. It would bring a heated seat screen up here, and then you had to use this button to adjust um, the temperature on the heated seats. Much simpler in this version to be able to just push and adjust your heat setting. So they've, they've made some good improvements there. Same with the whole heating system. Um, that was really tied into the infotainment originally, and so it's nice that they've changed that um, and really simplified it. Now one of the other features I forgot to mention that you get with the Sport model is the drive select. And so what you can do with this um, is, it, as I push that, so there's individual setting, there's a comfort setting, auto, and dynamic. And so you can adjust um, you can adjust the the driving performance of the vehicle. So um, the the things that it affects, and actually I think that we can go in and look at this on here as well. So we've got these different settings here, and you can scroll through them. So let's say we go to dynamic. Um, dynamic would give you stiffer suspension, stiffer steer, steering, and the car would accelerate. Um, faster, change the gear ratios. Um, individually, you could set your own settings. So let's say that you want to have um, fast acceleration, um, but you want the shocks to be a little bit softer, a little more comfortable. Maybe you want the steering to be a little softer. You can adjust that however you like in the individual setting. Auto, it will kind of just adjust to your driving performance. And then comfort, you're going to get looser suspension, looser steering, um, maybe a little bit better if you're just on a long highway drive to be able to have it in that that mode so kind of a cool feature on the vehicle a um, couple other features that we've got here um, when you're moving forward or backward the vehicle's got sensors and um, so you can turn that on or off here um, it's got a backup camera and then the sensors will beep as you get close to objects we've also got traction control here you've got hill descent control so you can use that below about 19 miles an hour and so that'd be if you're, say, on a really soft dirt or sandy downhill, you can push on that and it will help with braking as you're going down the hill. Um, this turns off the auto um, start-stop. So when you're, uh, let's say you're driving, you pull up to a stoplight and um, you're sitting idly in the car, as long as it's not using too much power for um, various vehicle functions, it's going to turn the engine off. And then immediately when you release the brake, let's say that the light turns green and you release the brake, the car starts back up um, and you're good to go. Um, and so it, it leaves all the functions inside the vehicle operating, just turns off the engine and runs off the battery um, until you're ready to go. And so it, it helps with saving, saving fuel and emissions. So kind of an overview of some of the functions of the Q5 and the interior.
so let's give it a test from 0 to 60 miles an hour turn the auto start and stop off so that the engine's running and ready set go boom here's 60 What's really great about this car is not just how quick it is, but the power delivery. It's so smooth and quiet. The shifts are so uh, seamless. It's just incredible how well refined the vehicle is.